A lot of people are not working in acoustically treated rooms and need to rely on mixing and headphones. Today I'm going to give you my top tips to get the best results in your mixes on headphones. Let's do it. Hey guys, Delby here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about mixing in headphones and how you can work towards getting the best results with what you've got. I'm lucky enough to be working here in a treated room, which is great, but I still rely on headphones to check my mixes. And as a matter of fact, I worked for a long time just in headphones, doing professional mixes for myself, releasing those tracks, and believe it or not, even mixing for other people. If you can, I recommend acoustically treating your room, but that may not be feasible for everyone. It doesn't have to be expensive. Here's a video about how I did it myself for cheap, but you may not have a dedicated room as a studio and maybe your parents or your partner don't want you acoustically treating the lounge. So the first important thing is to get a decent pair of headphones. I'm using the Sennheiser HD 650s and the III TMA Wireless Plus. I also used the Bayer Dynamic 880 Pro for a long time and in my opinion they're one of the best price to value ratios. But there's a plethora of headphone options out there so do some research and get the best thing that you can afford. Then get to know them. Don't chop and change headphones every six months. Get those headphones and use them for a long time. The longer you use them, the better, and eventually they'll feel like the point of reference, the place where you can trust what you're hearing. My next tip is about avoiding ear fatigue, which is a common problem mixing in headphones. Make sure you keep the volume low and take regular breaks. This is gonna stop your ears from tiring quickly and ensure that you're able to perceive what you're hearing with the most accuracy. My next tip is referencing. You need to reference when you're mixing with headphones, in my opinion. And by referencing, I don't mean just listening. There are a bunch of tools at our disposal that we can use to extract more information from a reference track. So my last tip for mixing in headphones is to make sure that you take that mix you've done and check it on different sound systems. Check it on your phone, on your earbuds, in the car, in a club if you can, basically wherever you can. This is really important to make sure that your mix stacks up. To other mixes. And this is pretty universal. It applies to mixing on speakers, not just headphones. And I've prepared a little project in Ableton so we can demonstrate that in a practical application. As always, if you want to download the project files from this video, there's a link in the description to Patreon. It's one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure I keep bringing you these videos every week. Now let's jump into Ableton and do some mixing. All right, so here we are inside Ableton, and this is a little project I've put together to demonstrate how we can use like referencing and tools to help get a better mix in our headphones. So let's have a listen to what we're working with. Cool, so a nice little deep kind of groove. Uh, we've got a reference track here, which is one of my tracks. It's a remix for Tom Evans on Valiant. It's a little bit different, a little bit more upbeat, but it's kind of in the same ballpark and that's what we want. But we can hear that that's sounding like quite a bit chunkier and quite a bit like more balanced quite a bit more punchy so we're going to try and use this reference track to get the loop that we're working with closer to this kind of mix so the first thing we're going to do is i'm going to explain a couple of tools that we're going to use we're going to use a loudness meter this is a free one called yulian loudness meter i'm going to use oscillos megascope this is a great plugin but it is a paid plugin so so if you don't want to use oscillos megascope you can literally just compare the waveform here and resample to compare the waveform Form. Does resampling mean? That means we have this track here, it's just an audio track. We've got the audio from set to resampling and the output set to external out. That means it's going to skip the master and go directly to the output. In this case, it's my audio interface. The resampling means that it's going to record exactly what's played on the master. So that means what we can do is hit record here. Right, so now we've got a loop of our track with a waveform. So we can use that to compare to the waveform of this like mixed and mastered track to see what the differences are because we can't necessarily hear all of the differences in our headphones, right? So we're going to use all of the tools available at our disposal to get that information. So the first thing I want to do is find out the loudness of this track. <laughs> So 
So about 8 to 8.5 lofts, negative 8.5. So that's where we're going for. So we can just use this reference or we can use the master to find out where we're at. I came from Detroit. So we're quite a bit quieter. We're at like minus 11 LUFS and we can look at the waveforms here, right? And see that's the mastered track, mix and mastered. That's ours, you know? We can just see here that there's a difference. There's a difference in volume. We're not even like hitting the zero dB mark. We've got headroom there and some of the elements are not punching through as much in this mix. So the first thing we're gonna do is set the kick volume. The kick is the central point of our mix and that is what we are mixing everything else to. So how do we find out the ideal volume for our kick we're going to reference it okay so we're going to look at this track and find a place where there's just a kick like here right at the start now we're going to use the spectrum analyzer from ableton spectrum and the important thing is to have this auto mode set on so that's going to show us the low and high value and what we're looking for is this low value so that's like basically showing us the loudest point of the track if we look at the spectrum analysis we'll see that the loudest point is going to be the kick drum Right, so that's like minus 12-ish decibels. And this up here is the high frequency and that's like minus 50-ish, okay? So this is louder. So that's good for finding out the balance between our kick and bass because we're gonna be able to know that those low frequency elements are the loudest thing in the track. So we're just gonna isolate the kick here. It doesn't matter that there's a hat and some other bits playing on top of it because we're just looking for that kick volume, the point where the kick is the loudest. And that's telling us here that that's peaking at minus nine. So that like fundamental frequency we can see of the kick is a peak value of minus nine decibels. So now we're gonna find the relative volume of our bass. We're not really interested in exact volumes. We're, we're interested in the difference in volume between the kick and the bass. So you wanna search through your track. I obviously know this track. I know that there's a part here where just the bass line is playing, but not the kick. Right, we could loop this part. Okay, so that tells us minus 14. All right, but let's just say that your track that you're referencing doesn't have a part where the bass is just playing by itself without the kick, which a lot of tracks don't, to be fair. So what we can do is just look at this waveform, listen to this track, right? We can tell by listening to it and by looking at the waveform that this is a bass note. Right, so all I'm going to do is loop that and then we're going to look again. Minus 14. Cool. We've got our kick at minus 9 and our bass at minus 14. That's 5 dB difference. So what we want to do is set the volume of our kick and the volume of our bass to be 5 dB different. So kick, I've got sub and a top. Sounds like this together. So we're going to adjust those independently. Now, when setting the value of your kick, you want to set it close to zero dB, but with a little bit of headroom, okay? I'm using this meter here because it's got these, it tells me these values here, these peak values, and I'm adding seven dB of gain with this. This is a free plugin. You can download it and install it. So the reason I'm adding that 7 dB of gain is it gives me a buffer. It gives me headroom. If I need to export a pre-master, I can just turn this off, turn off any limiting or whatever. And I know I've got a pre-master that has at least 7 dBs of headroom in it. Okay. So that's just a best practice type thing, but it's not the focus of this video. What we're going to use is this value here to set the kick. I like to set my kick with a peak value of somewhere between minus 4 and minus 3.5 i just know that when i get some other elements on top that's going to be about right because the kick is going to be the loudest part but there could be other elements playing on top of the kick so we want to leave a little buffer there that's what works for me you figure out what works for you we're interested in setting the relative volumes here so i'm going to set the kick so we're at minus eight so we want to bring that up We went a bit too far. If you hold shift, you can drag this fader in smaller increments. All right, that'll do. So we're at minus 
3.8 or you know right minus 4 so now we're going to solo the base I click here to reset this value minus 21 so we're a lot quieter okay so the goal that we're going for is around like minus 9 minus 8 to minus 9 So on the meters, that says it's right. Remember, this is just a starting point. We can fine tune things later, but we're just getting in the rough kind of ballpark area. So let's have a listen to those together. <laughs> okay, crazy that that's actually right at zero, but coincidence, I guess. So this was kind of something like... This. Right, the kick's way overpowering the bass. We can look at the Oscillos Megascope and kind of see how loud that represents. Now that we've got our kick and bass like relatively level matched, we can just kind of turn on the rest of this stuff and then bring down the limiter to get closer to that loudness level. So we check the loudness. So we're much closer. What I'm going to do is just bring this down, maybe one more dB. Okay, so now we're pretty similar. So let's have another listen. Okay. It's already a lot closer. Next thing we're going to do is look at the spectrum we're going to compare the spectrums of these two thing, two tracks i'm using span here if you check this link i've got a video about how to set up span and use it for referencing i'm not going to go through that because it's quite detailed but what we've got here is the sidechain input which is this reference track coming into span and in span we've got this blue which is our track coming in and we've got this red which is the reference track so what can we see here? We can see that there's a bit of a difference in the high end. We can also possibly hear that. So there's a lot more presence in the high end, right? What I like to do is check the kick. Okay, we can just use this one. We've got a snare here as well. So that sounds too loud to me. I know just from experience that I want the clap to be adding about 1 dB of additional gain to my kick. Okay, it's all right. It's in the kind of acceptable range, but I think I'm just going to bring this down by maybe 2 dB. Now we're going to look at our main hats which are these two here playing off beats so let's record this into our resample track here okay so now we've got a we can look at the waveform and then we can compare that waveform to this waveform here we don't have the bass line playing So the hats look like they're in a pretty close range, but from what I'm hearing, these could do with being a little bit louder. So I'm going to, again, solo these and solo these, because these are my main hats. I'm just going to bring those up together. So that sounds a bit closer. Let's try that. Okay, we've got a vocal in this track. Local record store. Listening. Okay, so this vocal is a lot louder. So what we're going to do is take this one, push it up a wee bit. Maybe 
1 dB less. I came from Detroit after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Okay, that's sounding good. Now, these melodic elements, they kind of sound all right, to be honest. But let's have a listen, see if we can reference something. Ones and tools to me. Okay. I came from Detroit after the fall of the birth. So it sounds like some of these stabs could be a little bit louder. I came from Detroit after the fall of the Berlin Wall. The city was gritting. Techno was coming out. Okay, so that's sounding ballpark pretty good to me. Let's go back to our span and check the frequency spectrum. I came from Detroit. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is that the hats could be a bit brighter, possibly. So this time, I'm going to take up the whole hat group by maybe 2 dB. I came from Detroit after the fall of the Berlin Wall. The city was gritting. Techno was coming out from under the floor. And possibly the bass up 1 dB. I came from Detroit. We need to keep adjusting things relatively because when something like the bass comes up, it pushes everything else up because it's quite a strong element. So I'll bring that down 1 dB again. I came from Detroit after the fall of the Berlin Wall. The city was and always listening as well. You know, it's, it's one thing looking at the meter, but we need to be hearing that what we're doing is right. So now we've got our kind of final balance that can be tweaked what we're going to do is compare it before and after so here's the before I came from Detroit. cool and our reference Checking our loudness again, one more time. I came from Detroit. So we can probably back off that extra 1 dB I added on the limiting, which again is going to change our relative balance. I came from Detroit. After the fall of the Berlin Wall. So another way to check if these highs are in the same ballpark is just looking at this spectrum analysis and seeing, okay, this is around minus 50. Minus 49. Okay, we can copy that to here. I came from Detroit after the fall of the Berlin Wall. So it's in the same ballpark. I think I'm just going to push it back that one additional dB. I came from Detroit after the fall of the Berlin Wall. The city was gritting. Coming out from under the Sounds about right. That one would be to taste, you know. I came from Detroit after the fall of the Berlin Wall. The city was gritting. Techno was coming out from under. And there we go. A rough balance on headphones using the tools that we have. If we can't completely rely on what we're hearing, then it's really important that we rely on other tools that we've got at our disposal to check that what we're hearing is what we want in the end result. As always, this project file is available from Patreon. There's a link in the description, so go and download that. There's also project files for pretty much every tutorial video I do on there, so there's a lot of content to check out. All right, guys, so hopefully you found some of those tips useful, and hopefully they're going to help you to get better mixes in your headphones. If you've got any other tips for mixing in headphones, let us know in the comments. Or better yet, let us know on Discord. And if you're looking for something to watch next, then check out this video. I think you're going to like it. That's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.